Hi, I'm Aubrey McCullough. I am a ear, nose, and throat physician at Penn Medicine Becker ENT. Typically how you know your baby has an ear infection is by how they respond. So one thing is, is that they may tug at their ear or play with their ear and kind of act a little irritable, fussy. Sometimes they may not be sleeping as well or eating as well. They basically tell you something is going on. Uh, but more typically can be playing with their ear. Um, also, they can have a fever or other signs. If that's the case, then you probably want them to be evaluated. If your baby has an ear infection, there's some things that you can do. So sometimes we treat with antibiotics. Uh, sometimes we can just observe. It depends on the severity of the symptoms. If your baby is between six months and 24 months, roughly, if they have just unilateral ear infection and it's not severe, we can observe. If they're actually over two and have bilateral or unilateral, we can also observe as well. Depends on the severity and what the ear actually looks like and how their constitutional symptoms are, sh are showing. It depends on what we do and what treatments we need for them. So ear infections, that ranges also. You'd think they would probably get better within two or three days, most likely about a week, especially with antibiotic therapy. If it lasts longer than that, obviously they need to be checked out. So sometimes even after they get over the acute infection, they still can have residual fluid, and that can usually last a few weeks. So it may cause a little bit of decreased hearing, but they won't have the pain that's associated with an acute infection. So teething itself does not cause ear infections, but it can look like an ear infection. So very similar. Patients can play with their ears, tug at their ears, be very irritable, not want to eat, not sleep well. So if that's the case and you're questioning it, um, always you know, have your baby evaluated by the pediatrician or by uh, ENT, and we can see if it's ear-related or if it's related just to tooth eruptions. So tonsil infections typically present, I think classically, as just a very severe throat pain, but also can be associated with trouble swallowing. You may even notice that if you look in the back of your throat, your tonsils are a little red, angry, swollen. Um, also can be associated with other symptoms like fever or chills or body aches. Similar to ear infections, I would say, to recover from a tonsil infection, that can take three, three days to a week. A lot of the time they are self-resolving, meaning most of the time it can be just a viral infection, but if it lasts longer, you may need antibiotic therapy to kind of resolve it. How you get rid of tonsillitis is a similar thing. So one thing is, is just watching it, self-resolving. If it's a viral infection, it will just take its course to kind of resolve. If not, you may need uh, antibiotic therapy depending on if we think it is a bacterial infection or a strep infection. If you have repeated infections, then the cure or end all of tonsillitis is actually getting your tonsils removed. Um, but we do have strict criteria for that, meaning seven infections in a year, five, in five infections over two years, or three infections for three years. So we just don't take tonsils out just because you have one infection. Um, it is something that we de definitely consider, but if it is a repeated problem, that's something that you may need in the future. So sometimes you can have a tonsil infection that affects one tonsil versus both tonsils. And sometimes it can become more of a severe infection, and you'll know it because it will cause unilateral neck pain or unilateral swallowing issues. You can also get the tissues around it to be swollen, like the soft palate, the uvula. You may notice that one tonsil is a lot bigger than the other. And if that's the case, that can lead to what we call a peritonsillar phlegmon or abscess. If that is the case, antibiotics are usually or definitely indicated, but you also may need to have it drained. So if it's something that you're noticing is just one side, one tonsil looks a little bit more swollen, and you're having severe symptoms, that's definitely a, re a reason to be evaluated. So you can tell if a, a tonsillitis is viral or bacterial based off of characteristics or how a patient is presenting typically. There are criteria out there that we do go by to go off of symptoms to see if it is bacterial. If it is bacterial, we're talking more specifically a strep infection. That's something that we treat you with antibiotics for. So some of the symptoms are you'd have these exudates on your tonsils, you can have lymph nodes in the neck, uh, fever, and lack of cough. With those constellation of symptoms, you tend to be more on the bacterial side versus viral. If you do have those symptoms, we can do like a rapid strep or a throat culture. That's something, a rapid strep is usually something done in urgent care or emergency room visit, but we can also do throat cultures to find out if it is bacterial. But with those four symptoms, we are more likely to treat with antibiotics. So cancer on a tonsil, if you look in the back of your throat, typically presents with one tonsil that is larger than the other. 
you may actually see an ulceration or a mass or lesion on the tonsil. That is something that you obviously want to be concerned about and have you know, come in to see your local EMT. You also may notice lymph nodes that are in the neck too. So unlike an acute infection that will be self-limiting and resolving, this is something that will stick around. So after a week, you're still noting the tonsil being enlarged um, or the big lymph nodes in the neck. That's something you definitely need to have further worked up. If you have any questions about anything that we went over, feel more than free to come in and see one of the physicians here and we'll be more than happy to take care of you.